Today, I am going to introduce you to Adobe Illustrator. It looks very similar to Adobe Photoshop in that you have a toolbar on the left, you have panels on the right, and you have a toolbar on the top. It works very differently, however, because Illustrator is based in vector and not pixels. So the first thing I wanna show you is how to open your own document. So on the top left, you would go to File and New. From here, you have a variety of options on the top. Perhaps you're making an image for your cell phone, a web page, or in our case, something we want to print. Letter is default to the size that you would be able to print from any of the copiers in the building. But we typically don't speak in points, we speak in inches. So over here, I would change this to inches. Now you'll see it's eight and a half by 11, which is standard copy paper size. You can change your orientation from vertical to horizontal. And down here under advanced options, I would switch from CMYK to RGB color. That will make the colors look much more like what you're imagining when you click them on the screen. So now that we have letter eight and a half by 11 inches, RGB, just ignore that little warning. It's saying it's not gonna print right. Trust me, it will. And now we're gonna hit create. So now this is your stage, so to speak. This is your document. Anything you create on here, like this box, is going to live here. And if I print, I will see it. If I move this box, however, so that only half of it's on the page, if I hit print, I'm only gonna see this half of the, the box. I'm not gonna see this side of it. Anything that you put over here is your workspace. So if I zoom out, you'll see that you have all of this gray space around your document. This is your table. This is your workspace. If you are trying to plan out a logo design and you've got 50 different fonts that you're working with and different ideas for the company, then you will put all of that stuff out here so it's easy to grab and pull into your document. But with your document, you only want to see what you're working on right now. First things first, as far as your toolbars are concerned, your left toolbar should be stacked long and skinny. If you click on this double line right here, then it will stack side by side and you'll be easy, it'll be easier to find things. Just like in Photoshop, anything that has a triangle underneath it, if you click and hold, you'll find other options living underneath there. You also have a variety of tools on the right ready for you to use. I'm always making sure that I can quickly find my layers and my navigator. Navigator, once again, will not default open for you. So from the top under window, this is just like Photoshop, alphabetical order, pull down until you find navigator and then that will open over here. This is really important in Illustrator when you have all this extra space you're working with as well. And then from the top toolbar, you have all of these options and effects and items very similar to the makeup in Photoshop. Okay, so let's go through our tools. If I come down one, two, three, four, five tools, I have a shape tool. If I click and hold, I've got rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, star, and a flare tool. I'm gonna start with the rectangle tool, and I'm just gonna click and drag and hold with my mouse. See the blue outline, the changing shape? That's just me holding down my mouse. If I want it to be a perfect square, I would hold down shift. Did you see how it went from a rectangle? To a perfect square that was me holding down shift on my keyboard so when i'm happy with my shape i'm just going to let go and now i have a rectangle i don't want it to be white though because that's hard to see so over here is my fill and my stroke stroke is your outline i'm going to double click on my fill this color picker box appears i can roll through the rainbow of colors and when i get to one that i like i have to click in here to make it show up here if I'm just scrolling through here, it's not gonna show up until I've clicked on the document. So now I can say, okay, and now you can see my green fill. I wanna change the stroke color as well. So I'm gonna double click on that and stroke is my outline. So I'm gonna go and grab a red outline because red and green are complementary colors, but you can't see that outline, it's hard to see. So I'm going to open my stroke. If you don't see stroke over here on the right, go to window and open it up. And with my box highlighted, 
if I start hitting the up arrow or I can come to this side and click here, now I can see my stroke. It's 20 points, whereas before it was one. Now let's say I want to move this. I don't like this shape. I want it to be longer. I'm going to come to my top left tool, my black um, selection arrow, and I can click on these toggles and change the scale of my shape. This is very similar to the transform tool in Photoshop. I can also angle it. Once you get the cursor to turn to a little curve, you can spin things around. And there's another thing you might have noticed. Do you see these little circles right here? Watch what happens when I click and hold on it. I'm going to click and hold and pull towards the center. See how it curved my edges? I can curve it anymore. I almost have a circle now. And then I can click back on it and move it back out. So there's a lot of simple things you can do with just the shape tool and the black selection tool. So I'm gonna come back to my shape tool, click and hold, I'm gonna get ellipse, that's fancy talk for circle. Move my stroke out of the way. And I can click and drag, I can make an oval, or I can hold down shift and make a perfect circle. And this has similar options that this one did. I can change this and make it an oval as opposed to perfect circle and kind of change the shape of it if I want. The star tool is a lot of fun. You click and hold and it will draw your star out and then you kind of have to angle it where you want it before you let go. Now let's say I want more points on my star. I want to make it more like a seal for like a certificate. If I just click and let go, it gives me options for points. So let's say I want 10. Now it looks like I'm making a statement, exclamation point. So that is your shape tool. You can click on the different shapes and change their order. So let me change the color on some of these so you can see through them. I'll keep the, where did I throw my stroke? I'll keep the stroke size red on all of them, but I'm gonna make it not so in your face loud. Okay, so I have some different colors here, which makes it easier to see who's on top and, and who's in the back. So let's say I wanna put this one behind everybody else. If you notice over here in my layers, you can see all of these clustered together, but they're not, they're not merging with each other when I lay them on top and then let go and then move them. So in Illustrator, it's kind of like you're shuffling a deck of cards. These are all individual cards. They're just all on the same layer. So to move this to the back, I'm gonna highlight it with my black selection arrow. I'm gonna right click. I'm going to arrange and I'm going to send to back. Now, notice that it's behind everybody. Let me make it bigger. So now that lives behind everybody and all of these are sitting on top. So you can always change the order. You just right click, arrange, send to back. So now that star is behind everybody else. Another thing you can do is you can change the transparency of your shape. So let's say I click on my rectangle and I'm going to open up my transparency. And once again, if you don't see this over here on the right, just go to window. Everything's in alphabetical order under window. And so with this highlighted, I'm going to drop my opacity. Now you can see those cool angles and edges from the stars below it. So you can have a lot of fun with changing the opacity. Another thing you can do, and this is on the transparency panel, where it says normal, you can change the blending mode. So I'm just using the roller ball on my mouse to roll through these, and you can see how sometimes it gets lighter, sometimes it gets darker. Like here, it's a completely different shade. That's because I'm on difference. So there's a lot of fun things you can do with this. But wait, there's more. I can also put patterns 
on my shapes. So let's say I want to put a pattern on this. So to put a pattern on here, I need to locate my swatches. From my swatches, I have some default options. So like it can put a gradient on it. It can put this weird little doodad on it. But let's get some specific patterns. So on swatches, I'm going to come to these three little lines. And this is important to note, on all of the panels in, in Illustrator, there's always three little lines on the right that have more information hiding behind them. So I'm going to click there. I'm going to open my swatch library. I'm going to patterns, basic graphics, and I'm just going to stop at basic graphics dots for now. So when I click on this, you'll see that now I have all of these dot patterns to work with. So this is really neat. It's a nice way to get a, a shape more interesting, for lack of a better word, because already now it's creating more interest behind these shapes by having that pattern. You can also go back, library, patterns, basic graphics. I could go to textures. And you can get some really neat effects with the textures panel as well. Now, one other thing I can do is I can change my stroke. On all of these, I just have the default brush that's outlining them. But if I highlight a shape and I go to my brushes, let me pull these guys out of the way. My brushes have different effects. So these are your default. And one thing I want to share with you, see this one that says basic? It doesn't actually exist. And sometimes you will go to use the brush tool and it will not work. And what I want you to do is look at your brushes panel. And if all you see is this, that means Illustrator took your brushes away from you. I have no idea why it's been happening for as long as I can remember. But all you have to do is click on the three little lines, open your library, and open some more brushes. So the standard brushes would be artistic, artistic calligraphic. And when you look at these, you've got standard dots, angles, and, and different sizes of dots already there. Notice if you pick a big one, that's the size of it. You can go bigger, but you can't go smaller. Now. There's also some fun brushes there. So I'm on brushes, three little lines, open brush library. I'm gonna go arrows, arrows special. Look at all these arrows. Now, when I click on them, it's tracing the entire shape and starting and ending with an arrow. Oh, that one was really big. <laughs> so this will give you some pretty fun effects. If you pick one that has a color, it's going to stay that color. You can't change the color of it. But I find that using the different brushes can have some pretty dynamic effects on a project. Okay, so this was a simple introduction to the interface of Illustrator, the shape tool, stroke and fill, brushes, swatches, and then how to right click, arrange, and bring stuff to the front and stuff to the back, change the layer orders. Try all of these items on your own computer and then head to the next tutorial to see what more you can do with Illustrator.